RBGFM, locals talking to locals. Wayne Maxwell. Now, the Chair of Operations and Finance announced this morning the appointment of Wayne Maxwell as the new Chief Executive for KCDC. Brings a wealth of experience to the role. The appointment will send a message of stability, positive engagement and open communication to our community. That's uh, from Councillor Michael Scott. It will be a popular appointment both within the organisation as well as the wider local government sector and he sends his regards. So I've got Wayne Maxwell on the telephone line. Good morning, Wayne. Good morning, Nigel. Is this a Christmas present, or is one you uh, don't want to open until after Christmas? Uh, well, I'm literally going to start uh, after anniversary weekend, Wellington anniversary. So it is a Christmas present. It's a great one, um, but it's one I've worked pretty hard for in the last few weeks as well. Yeah, I bet you you have. But to be fair, Wayne, um, you've been sort of involved in the council for how many years now as sort of the group services manager? Yes, yeah, so I've been at Kapiti Coast Council for four years, almost exactly to the day, would you believe, I started anniversary weekend in 2014. Oh, is that right? Oh, anniversary mm. day. So you've actually got the background of the um, of the council and the community, which is pretty important in this role, isn't it? It is. Look, I think that, that was really my advantage. Uh, that's the point I wanted to make, is, is I understand this organisation pretty well now. Four years here, uh, I know where we've come from. Uh, some of the lessons that we've learned and I know where we're going and I, and I really wanted to make sure that I could do my bit to contribute to us building on where we've got to so far. Yeah, you've got good relationships with the community out there too, haven't you, in lots of ways? I'd like to think so. Uh, you know, I've, I've come across many uh, people in our community and organisations and, and look, I do find that there's often a lack of understanding of just exactly what your council does for you. You know, only 60% of our public understand that we do road. So if that understanding isn't there, what I do find, when we have a conversation and we can share a bit more of that understanding, all of a sudden we've got a good thing going. People know what, what we're giving, uh, what we're doing for them. So the wealth of knowledge you've gained over many years in this sort of business, I mean, it's always changing, isn't it? The government are putting more and more pressure on local governments. Do you find that difficult to keep up with, or now you're sort of on top of it, you just uh, take it as it comes? Never on top of it, but we, we definitely roll with it. Uh, yeah, you're right, Nigel. I've been involved in local government for over 15 years, and um, a, as I uh, have put it, every one of those years uh, I've learned new stuff. Local government really complicated. We, we've got over 20 completely different business operations, so they have different ways of doing things, and, and that, that can be complicated. And as you pointed out, then we get changes uh, brought to the table regularly. So and we've got to deal with it and, and, and figure out how to do it as efficiently as we can. That, that is part of the fun of this job, though. That's why I love it. No two days are the same. Oh, fun, you say. That's great stuff. As a chief executive, can you sort of go back to the government and say, hey, well, this is not really on for local governments to carry on? I, I know there's several issues at the moment that local government should be involved with, and that was the Easter trading was one that shouldn't have really come back to local government, should it? Absolutely right. Yeah, we would say they, they really should have fronted up on that uh, nationally. N not only is it a difficult thing for people to work through, but it's time-consuming and expensive. And, w and why should that have to be repeated 60 or 70 times across the country? So, so yes, there's, there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, you know with our mayor, he, he is very keen that we're advocating on behalf of our council for what we think should be happening or shouldn't be happening, and, and we'll definitely be continuing to push in that way. I should imagine you've got a good relationship with uh, Guru, our mayor, because um, he's been around for over a year now, seems to be running the helm of the ship pretty well. Oh, definitely. Uh, I think we do get on very well. Uh, we understand each other well. And look, it goes back before that as well, doesn't it? He's obviously been on the council for a number of years. So uh, that's that I think is a great advantage, not only him, but, but all of the members of council I, I think I've got pretty good relationships with. And that, that stands us in good stead as we kick this all off. Right. So challenges ahead, uh, Wayne, for the council, for our community, any major ones that you see coming up? Uh, I think we've talked a lot about the current challenges, and, and they're my focus in the short term. You know, we've, we've got financial constraints, everyone knows that, and we've initiated what is now um, becoming well known as the Green Line Strategy, and so, so that's all about managing, uh, if you like, balancing our ambitions with affordability. Yes. So there's things we need to do, uh, there's things from a risk perspective uh, that we really need to address, but we can only go at a certain pace, because the community needs to be able to... Um, 
to deal with the impacts of those. It needs to be sustainable for everybody. Yes, I think we've got a current council that are very wary of the fact that we can't extend our financial debt too much more. So we've got to pull the reins in a wee bit and uh, do what we have to do, but um, put those things we wished on the wish list aside just for the time being. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of things we'd love to do, Mm. but we're realistic and we know that we've got to stick to the things that need to be done as a priority. Right. So as Group Manager Corporate Services, we've got to fill that vacancy now, Wayne. When does this happen? We do, we do. You have this trickle-down effect, don't you? Yes. Um, uh, That'll all happen. Uh, We'll we'll kick that off in the new year. Uh, I think for now, everyone just needs to focus on Christmas. It's been a tough year. We've achieved a lot. We're pretty, pretty proud of the things we've achieved. Yes. But I think at this time of year, everyone just needs a chance to relax and and enjoy time with their family and loved ones. Wayne, we thank you very much for your valuable time today and wish you all the very best as our new Chief Executive of the Kapiti Coast District Council. You have a very Merry Christmas with family and friends. Thank you very much, Nigel. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Wayne Maxwell. There we are, our new Chief Executive, taking up the position just after anniversary weekend in January. Four years with the council that he's been, and he started off four years ago, almost on the day he's going to be take over the jobs of chief executive. 106.3 BGFM.